Hello, I'd like to talk to you about price floors and ceilings. I wrote uh, the definitions. Price floors are just a minimum price. That's why we call it a floor. Get it? I okay, that wasn't that funny, but they do create a surplus when they're above the equilibrium price. In fact, let's show that. And let me drop, put on, can I, let's do it in red just to keep it the same color. So I'm going to draw a curve, and if we have price up here, quantity down here, let's assume we have an upward sloping supply curve, downward sloping demand curve, here's our equilibrium price, and let's assume our equilibrium price is, uh, shall we say, eight dollars. Now let's say we have a thousand units. And then let's say we have a price floor. I'm just price floor just raises the price. If only the price goes up, neither of the, the demand curve's not going to change, the supply curve's not going to change. We just have a higher price. So I'm going to draw a line straight across just to show a higher price. Let's say it's ten dollars. And at higher prices, what do sellers want to do? Let's show the price going up here. You know, if I'm a seller, I like higher prices because, you know, some sellers who were not able to sell at the lower price of $8 now can afford to sell. And also, if I was selling before, now I'm getting more, more money. So let's assume quantity goes up to 12. Is that supposed to be 1,200? Let me see if I can get it to a little bit better. Oh, that looks so much better, doesn't it? And let's assume at higher prices, buyers don't want to buy as much. So I just do this dashed line down um, just to show how much buyers want to buy at that price. I'm going to assume it's 800. So we just created a surplus in this case, 1200 minus 800. I think that's pretty close to 400, don't you? And that's a surplus. So if this was a minimum wage law, more people would want to work at higher prices. Firms would want, want to hire fewer workers, which means some workers are going to have a hard time finding a job. And in fact, the people who are most likely to find a job, or have a harder time finding the job, are the least productive. In fact, on the supply curve, we have different people willing to do the un unskilled labor. So these, these people down here would be the people with the lowest next best alternative. And then we have people with higher next best alternatives. Now we're getting people with more better next best alternatives. And so what we often find with minimum wage laws, at least what we would expect, is the people with the least skills are going to have the hardest time finding a job. And at the higher wages, firms could be pickier because now you have all this more you have more people looking for the job, saying, hire me, hire me. And so normally you'd expect the price to fall down to back to eight dollars because of the surplus of labor. But now we have a law saying that would be illegal behavior for you to go back to equilibrium. So we have a surplus. Let's take a look at a price ceiling. And I'm going to actually I'm going to do this one in green, I think. So here's our, uh, that's not very good, is it? Let's make a little straighter line. No, still not good. Ah, uh, better. So here's our supply curve. Here's our demand curve. Here's our price, our quantity. Let's sit, keep at the same equilibrium price of $8. Let's have an equilibrium quantity of a thousand units. But now instead of a price floor, where this is this is the minimum price, I can't go below that. Let's have a price ceiling. Well, if the price ceiling is above equilibrium, if it was the same as ten dollars, well, this is a maximum price. I can sell less than ten dollars. So above equilibrium, the price ceiling won't have an effect. The only time it will have an effect is when it's below equilibrium. So let's draw it below. Let's say this is five dollars. At five dollars, let's just say, hey, let's use the twelve hundred again. You know, at lower prices, people want to buy more. At lower prices, firms want to sell less. Let's assume this is eight hundred again. 
is supposed to be a zero. Does that look like a zero? So 1200 minus 800 is 400 again. But now this is a shortage. This would be like a price ceiling, so it might be $5 per square foot. Um, land, or, uh, people who are renting apartments might want $8. And so what we would tend to find is at lower prices, well now, uh, in fact, classic story I remember reading about price ceilings. Uh, and this, or you can think of this, um, the $8 might be $800 per month or $500 per month would be the maximum rent they could charge. Well, if I can pay less rent, I probably may not want to live with friends. I would, I would try to get an apartment. So you have more people wanting apartments. Fewer people want to rent apartments because they're not making as much. We just created a shortage of apartments. It's going to be hard to find an apartment. And uh, one other thing we expect to find is if I look for an apartment, there might be this huge line of people. I get in line and fill out my application. The next question comes up, who do you want to rent to? If I was the landlord, well, I have all these people. I have some people who have stable income, other people who might have kids, unstable income. So what I expect to find is, well, the people with unstable income and lower income, I would expect would have a harder time paying rent. And I'd also want to check their references to make sure they pay. But on average, what we'd expect is it's going to be especially hard for the poor to find apartments. Well, a lot of times, rent control is put in let's saying, let's help the poor. Well, if the poor are often the people who are hurt the most. If I have a person who's more likely to pay because they have a stable income and I have a poor person, I'd probably choose the person who has a stable income because I'm already not making much, so why not make it easier uh, that I'm going to be paid? I have a choice between all these different people. And I have all this a shortage of apartments, so I can be choosier. And so we expect the poor to be especially hurt. And also even on price floors. A lot of times the poorest of the poor often would compete best by offering low wages, but now they can't. They have to offer higher wages. So often we find is the poorest of the poor find it hardest to compete with uh, minimum wage laws. Well, what about if the price ceiling, let's bring it down here. What about if the price ceiling was above equilibrium? Or, um, let's take it over here. So here's our supply curve, here's our demand curve, and we assume higher prices, firms are willing to sell more, Pe people are want willing to buy less at higher prices. Oops. Let's assume this is $8, $8 if I can write. Let's assume this is 1000 again. I like those numbers for some reason. And now let's put our price ceiling above. And this is a ceiling. That look, that's supposed to be a G, isn't it? That looks like a G, doesn't it? It's a maximum price. So I could have just read, written pr max price. And let's say our price ceiling is $10. Well, if I was at $10, firms would produce more. People would want to buy less. But I could lower the price. It's legal for me to charge less than $10. So I would expect to, to be right here. And I would expect to have no effect. On the other side, if I have a price for, here's the price, here's the quantity, supply curve, demand curve, uh, can't even write, get too excited about doing these curves. They're so fun, aren't they? Okay, that looks a little better, doesn't it? So here's our price floor below equilibrium. Now let's assume this is uh, $6.00. And equilibrium, let's keep it at the eight dollars. So here's eight dollars, here's a thousand. And now the law says I cannot pay less than six dollars. Could be a minimum wage law, could be something else. So let's say the minimum wage law is six dollars. I know it's not, but let's say it is. And currently, if I want to get employees, I need to pay eight dollars because if I pay less than eight dollars, if I pay six dollars, people say, well, I can go over here and get eight bucks. And so there's not going to be a shortage of workers. Wage just goes up to $8. It's legally going to pay more than the legal and minimum wage. So we would expect no effect. Isn't that cool? So um, another thing we expect with price ceilings, if they have an effect up here. So in this case, with the effect, 
we expect things like this. Uh, let's put it in green since that's what I did over here. So we might expect more discrimination. We might expect deterioration of the apartments. You know, and it's going to be hard for new people to find apartments. So is it going to be very unpopular? No, actually, normally it's really popular to have price ceilings. Because, for example, New York City, I believe, and I could be wrong in this, but I think about 60% of people live in rent-controlled apartments. Well, if you get rid of the rent control, instead of paying a lower price, you're saying, we want to raise the price to you. So, you know, you, they might change who has to take care of the apartment, some other things, but it tends to be very politically popular. Even though it was actually put in as a temporary measure during World War II, which was years before I was born. So a lot of times, temporary measures last a very, Untemporary amount of time. 